Guys, it is finally time to settle the age-old debate. Something that's been argued since Henry Ford's first Model T came out of Detroit. Rumor has it that on October 2nd, 1908, Henry's good friend Dale said, and this is a direct quote, brother, it'd be faster if we LS swapped it. Oh, Hank, he didn't take it very well. And since the beginning of the internet in 1931, you guys have been arguing about it. It ends today and not by racing them. That didn't turn out great. Instead, we're gonna find out which ones are worth more once you wad them up trying to prove V8 dominance. That's right, it's another head-to-head -head salvage story. just like Henry intended. If you can't tell, they're both supercharged. We all know what I like here, I'm a vet guy. There's only one person in this shop who's actually owned them both, and he's standing right there. Hey, it's 550 Eric. Coyote, baby. Dual overhead cam, 7,500 RPMs. Here we go, here we go. You want your sports car to rev like a truck, or do you want it to rev out? Wow. Ooh, rev out. that's a good yeah, point. All right, so you've owned both, right? Yep. Only one of those blew up. Well, <laughs> well, yeah, that is true. well, looks like there's a little more good on here than I originally thought. Some kind of long tubes, I don't know what they are. Fernando's angle kit here. Did you see what's above the resonator delete? High flow cast. That looks like a carbon fiber long drive shaft. Drive shaft shop. Okay. And I haven't even looked at that car yet. And this thing, as much as I'm not a Ford guy, has a lot going for it. Well, I hate to admit that. Definitely cared about it. Money, did they though? Well, <laughs> look, look at up it. until the point that he, you know, did whatever he did. I think the 10 speed got him. Maybe he just, you know, kicked it to eighth gear and it just spun out. It looks like the steering rack has junkyard markings. Yeah, on. I, I did rack. notice that. That's not... the only thing that stands out is really odd Unless to me. It was the... But it's well, also it's a time. Is it, it could be that it was serviced. Maybe. There is way more aftermarket on here than I was expecting. It looks like a BMR brace. I don't see any labeling. Fair. Yet. Well, these arms, they also look BMR. So we have rear arms, possibly BMR, possibly something else Eric can't tell us. I don't know what he's good for. <laughs> Coney Red shocks. Uh, we have the 315 diff because it's an automatic. Yeah, I'm, I'm running off my Mustang knowledge here. RTR sway bars front and rear, which I believe Vaughn makes them himself, right? Like hand forged on an yeah, anvil? Yeah, yeah, okay. Yep. Uh, I, I thought so. Anvil, yep. um, easily the best thing under here, pending the brand of the long tube headers is this carbon fiber drive shaft. Like, they are big money. We'll get into the interior in a second, but as far as options go, other than like the performance pack with the Brembo's, which it does not have, it's a very high option car. I will pull out my official receipt here, straight from Copart. The Coyote, $12,718. Actually a really good deal. The C6, $8,673. So we paid a lot less, it's also a lot rougher. I don't know. Crispy? Ford quality, baby. I know we're missing a center dash console. We got the digital cluster, which is a big deal. Yep. Big Premium, money. Not performance pack. AC seats. Come on. You, you guys, you, can you guys do that really in your Corvette? That stuff. Come no, on. I'm going fast enough actually, where I don't need you can, AC You can seats. actually do it in a C7, but you can't do it in this one. So we'll call that a W. Uh, this is what you get when you supercharge a Mustang. How many horses was this puppy making? Eh, probably like six. And Z06 would make that. Maybe like 650, I don't know. Don't is need it, one of those to make it either. Is it on corn, I wonder? Go huff the fuel. It didn't smell like it. So this is your regular pump gas Mustang, which has a pretty fancy blow-off valve down there. That might be the biggest blow-off valve I've ever seen. It's surely a lot bigger than that one. Yeah, it's gotta be one of those like Godzilla ones or whatever they call them. I mean, I gotta admit, that's a pretty sick name for a blow-off valve, oh, Godzilla. Yeah, that doesn't look so hot, does it? Yeah, so you can see the angle of the frame kind of pointing to the sky. That's it's that's not normal. I mean, the frame's supposed to be like like this car is literally on the ground. Like the frame should be like. I'm doing my best to defend this car and find good things about it. I'm not finding a lot. There's something else not that great with it. And I guess it's time to show you guys. Uh, I know it's wrong. It's a new radiator shroud. Uh, <laughs> it's aluminum. Yeah, we're off to a good start. This is what, three cents in a linear strap? Yep. Yeah. Look at this so this thing doesn't look great. 
That hit the crank pulley? I mean... The rats did it. That's fine. No, that's fine. Oh. Subframe. That's it, fine. We have to find good stuff with this, uh, not bad stuff. Uh, <laughs> and on that note, it has an iron block. Great for power, terrible for money. Uh, really bad for money. Is it? Yeah. You can see the engine block. It's black. Not great. This means in a boat. And well, we're not going to talk about that. All right. <laughs> now for some good news. If they're not totally bent, it looks like it has Cook's headers. They're expensive. And that one had a carbon fiber drive shaft. This one has a gaping hole in the drive shaft or torque tube, whatever you want to call it. This ain't looking real good already because you're trying to steal parts does, off of it. How does this thing come off? How do these little well, fittings you, work? If you can't figure out how to get it off, I guess you don't get it, do oh, you? I'll go get a pair of dikes and I'll get it off real quick. <laughs> Cut off the other, they tapped them in the washer. Got it. Is it? Whoa! <laughs> Come on, Karen. 150 your best offer. The good thing is it looks like that it did not transition any energy to the back end of the car. Which, if true, is a big deal. Manual transmission, good money. 342 rear end, even better money, believe it or not. Um, another plus on this one, Borla S-Type exhaust. Needless to say, we're not going to get to hear this puppy fire up because, well, uh, I'm not explaining that. You guys can figure that out. That one. He, he's already making his claim no to the Mustang. Look, can, can we at least look this one over nope. before we all decide on which car is going to win? Can we finish? That's the whole premise of the video. How much do you think we can get out of these completely bald nittos? <sighs> it's going to cost us three bucks each to get rid of them, so... We got three cents of scrap. You stole the blow-off valve. We're down six bucks in this. So what, we're negative $5.97 on this car so far. Have you been inside of it yet? No. All right, get inside of it. That's where this thing redeems itself. Maybe I don't know if you remember when you bought this, what color the interior is. Oh. It's got to be red. You're it saying is, that's red. It is red. Okay, well, so we have a life still. And it's, with my renewed hope here, I got one more thing I just saw underneath of it. A fuel system. A kind of nasty fuel system, hopefully, maybe. So if it's anything like mine, it's going to have an auxiliary pump right about there. The Mustang. It didn't come with a faded beanie. There is one person in the shop that is an expert in very small very inefficient superchargers <laughs> take it take it away dog so it's actually a big deal what this one has this has the eight rib upgraded setup so you have an eight rib drive belt which is a completely different mounting system and it also has an auxiliary drive for the alternator on the other side which i am going to take off of this car for the fd so it's not going to be for sale but that's a lot of useful knowledge for you guys <laughs> so that about sums up the video you ready it's christmas morning there's our money nobody reacted i'm not impressed nobody reacted it's a, it's a gm interior <laughs> it's time i'm actually going to give you my sales pitch for why you should be team chevrolet in this red door panels five six hundred dollars the black ones like 250 not worth much the seats if we can get them halfway decent fifteen hundred dollars maybe more yeah check that out you like that right easy three hundred four hundred dollars there way more than the black stuff center console same deal tons of money driver knee panel also tons of money you seem to be really pushing hard for our viewers to pick the corvette and i want you to put your money where your mouth is i'll take the mustang you can take the corvette and we'll bet lunch on it. Actual oh. good lunch, not McDonald's or something like that. Actual good lunch if you take the Corvette. Yeah, there's a Mighty Mouse catch can here too. <laughs> we got a red top battery. If anybody wants to pay like five grand for that, let me know. We really need the numbers. For argument's sake, I'll take your bet, Dalt. I mean, do you just want to get lunch tomorrow or for what? Do you just want me to buy it? <laughs> no, we're going we're gonna to let it play out. Stand next to whatever car. St stand next to whatever car. Cal just pointed over here. So, okay. Oh, man, you're all by your lonesome over there. Nope. I cannot abandon the LS. It just can't happen. I think we have debated this enough. It's not looking real good for the LS boys. Which one do you want to kill first? I'll start that one. It's early in the week. That one's probably going to be a little harder. As per usual, Corvette's coming in first. Look at this little guy. Look at that six rib. Looks like an AC belt. 
All right, we're not an hour into the part out and we already have fantastic news on the C6 front. Typically when these target tops are popped off, when they're hanging on the car wrong, when there's a massive gap, it's the actual top that's broken. It appears on this one, we actually got lucky. Once Tyler got the top off, it looks like everything with that is perfectly straight. Those things, they don't bend. They are what they are. If they're gonna break, they actually break. It's gonna be hard to pick up in the video, but this windshield frame itself is a little tweaked. Same with the halo back there. These tops, where they'll break is right here around this rear post. And fortunately, this one is A-OK. -okay. Also super important, these front latches here still work as they should. These guys here will break. Even though these are replaceable, it's not a good sign when they do. Everything moves as it should. The alignment pins perfectly intact. I think we got really lucky this morning, huh? Yeah. It's still very early, but there's hope. if you're watching this at home on YouTube or if you're standing here in the shop or if you're the one cutting it you're equally nervous you have to be I, that did not go horribly at all that was way smoother than it should have been I was thinking it was just gonna bash down on that cart we had already discussed it talked about how the fact that it was only gonna hit the subframe which is already damaged and it kind of just sat down on there that was a 10 out of 10 way to start this morning oh no <laughs> That ain't supposed to be like that. Yeah, I think it might have got the fuel return line too. You can see the firewall there where it's completely bashed in. That is ridiculous. The cow is pushed into that broken fiberglass there. Well, one thing I do notice here. Remote bleeder. Not only a remote bleeder, it's a green remote bleeder. I think green. some of us know what that means. Unless somebody's faking it, I think we might have a monster clutch in here, which will surely pad the numbers just a hair. Once again, that was a pretty effective job of getting this front frame section back down at the level it needs to be. That is just absolutely wild. As promised earlier, here is our beautiful MGW shifter. It's an easy $275, $300. Oh God. That is super impressive, I guess we can call it that, maybe. Um, wow. And there we go. This is very clearly that new quick change bell housing. You don't even have to touch the bolts. I guess before we get this off the subframe, worry about a leak down, we're gonna go ahead and figure out what engine we actually have here. Before we get to that, the cooks, they actually look pretty good. It does appear that just the bolts got bent down there. Maybe the flange, just the hair. They did scrape the ground a little bit. Whether this happened in the wreck or pre-wreck, who knows? People buying with dents all the time, they still pull similar money, so I'm not too worried about it. One thing I am worried about, this right here. 6-0. Oh. okay. It's not the iron block, but it's one of the good ones. As predicted, monster clutch. We gotta pull it off and see exactly which one it is and of course, what kind of shape it's in. Though I'm not super confident about the way that looks. Nonetheless, we might have some parts there that are good for somebody. Someone has definitely had the rear main cover off here as well, which I think we're gonna go ahead and pull right back off. Of course, being the most expensive, we did want a 6.2, but a 6.0, I'll take it. At least it's not a 5.3. While I am excited about that, I'm not necessarily surprised. You can tell going through this car, whoever did it, did it pretty right, you know, before the wreck. This is set up. There you go. Oh, look. Oh. Okay, well, there's our pilot bearing. That's not ideal. Also not ideal. This is not what I was hoping for, but I suppose it is what it is. As long as the actual crank isn't damaged, you can see where the pilot bearing came out of it. I'm not gonna lie to you guys, this is not exactly what I was expecting to find in here. Just give it hell, I mean, it's not like, <laughs> it's not like we're gonna hurt it any worse. Well, these are still good, so. Yeah, the, the one good piece. Oh, there we go. Something. That's impressive, sort of. Wow. Right there, that's disc number one. That guy there, disc number two, 
right here, this number two and a half, I guess we'll call it. Fernando, there's one part you definitely don't have to photo from the C6. Is this a clutch? It's part of it. Add it to the wall of shame here and we'll keep rocking. Now, before we decide the fate of that engine, we have to leak it down. It's always the most important thing in this video and it is no different this time. If we have an engine that actually leaks down good, we can consider replacing the intake manifold with a couple cracked sensors because it's such a nice package for somebody, especially with the blower. If you can see the inside of the intake port there, it is super clean. I'd still venture to guess based on that, based on how clean the back of this engine was. This thing's a relatively new engine. Not looking bad so far. I mean, it is a boosted motor that may have gapped rings or something like that. So I don't expect this to be, you know, a three, four percent engine. Uh -oh. Well, uh -oh. well, that, that didn't take very long. Yeah, that's not ring gap. No, I don't think so. Sounds like intake valve to me. Um. Yeah, well, at least we're not gonna have to stand around here long, huh? So we didn't make it two cylinders in, it was leaking horrendously through an intake valve. So we're gonna pull the intake, see what's going on. If you've been with this series from the beginning, you know we have never had a bad engine. It's actually been kind of suspicious, but I think I kind of set us up for failure on this one. Typically in these videos, we're buying like the best of the best cars, except that one Hellcat that one time. Uh, this was definitely not that. So that was cylinder two. I don't think it's technically two. I guess it would be three that failed. I would venture to guess that even though this car had a hood on it, it didn't seal properly in some way, somehow, water got down into this hole. Tyler just brought up a very good suspicious point. Austin, can you go over there to that motor real quick? Yes. Yeah, so we, we need to talk about something on camera. I was just saying, like you were talking about this blower, last time you needed some engine parts, um, that motor leaked down bad too, so that we need good, to know what's going on. That is that well, is a good point. What's, what's the deal, dog? <laughs> that is a good point. I mean, if, if the blower's coming off anyway, you know, it's already off, you know what I mean? Like <laughs> This thing must have got water in it. My goodness, indeed. F, man, that sucks. Yep. I mean, at least they're 243s. Exactly, like, like they're still plenty of money in this in parts looks pretty sick innovators west baby we love to see those you know not typically all smashed up like that but otherwise they're really nice to get in here god it looks so clean too that sucks that really sucks this is super clean <clears throat> I just want to go put that in his juke or what? <laughs> <laughs> oh god, look at the uh, look at what's coming out from in between there. I can't tell if that's pink or rust. I mean, maybe they ran straight water in this thing. Oh my god! No, no, <laughs> that's disgusting. Oh, but the cylinder walls look so good. Oh my god, look at those cylinder walls. All this orange stuff you see in there, that, you know, rusty water slash coolant possibly mixture, came out of the water jackets. If any of that water that built up in the head had actually got down into the cylinders, they'd be super, super rusted. Fortunately, that's not the case. So I'm going to ask for your help here, guys. I'm not a truck motor guy. I've never built one. We're talking, and we don't think these are stock pistons. You know who is a truck motor guy? Pig. Pig is like one of our number one customers. He buys a lot of stuff. He just lowballs us every single time he, he needs something. He's bought a lot of stuff for a grand total of like $600 over the past yeah. five years. Now, if there is a silver lining to this whole thing, it's that if we have to pick an engine to actually not pass leak down, it definitely needs to be an LS. The Mopars, the Mustangs, not nearly worth as much in parts. Completely torn down as far as we're going to tear it down at least. This is the way we will end up selling this thing. We do still have to pull the rear cover off, but first... It's time to separate this transmission and see if we at least have a good trans diff combo. Well, no physical damage, and there's definitely no reason to believe this would be damaged. This is unfortunately all too common in a lot of wrecks, but it looks like the engine in the actual torque tube took the brunt of the damage. I have had one of these bad in the past, and when it was bad, it was really bad. The shaft was bent. It was just disgusting. I did find a piece of the intake manifold up in here. In the cylinder. That's not a good thing, typically. They definitely look like the OEM, LS7, whatever you want to call them lifters. Nothing real special, which I suppose is to be expected from an iron block build. Oh, yeah. Yeah. RGV up in there. 
there. Okay, well, that doesn't really tell me a whole lot. What is that? Howard's? Howard's. Well, we're gonna have to do some research because I don't recognize that Howard's may be the blank, or maybe I'm just not educated enough. Once again, as always, if you are more educated than we are, put it in the comments. Pig's already on the hook, don't worry. <laughs> I messaged Pig this morning and said, do you want a definitely cammed, potentially piston rot iron block? And he said, yeah, half off though. Half off, five grand. Yeah, so we, we gotta double the, double the price yeah. and then give it and then we'll get retail for and it. He'll be none the wiser until he watches this video. <laughs> Perfect. Put an RIP in the comments for the Corvette, and now we get to go do one of my favorite things, scrap a Mustang. Eric brings up a good question up there. Where did the whole like Mustangs hitting people meme go? Did they just like stop that? Did they pass that title to Challengers and Chargers? This did produce a good bit of parts. I know a it's lot. an engine teardown, which engine teardowns, always gonna be more parts. We know that by now. Yeah. It will, it it's, does. Yeah, yeah, there's no way around it. Mm -hmm. As Fernando just put it, engine teardowns, it sucks. Sucks the photo, sucks to take apart, sucks for a labor cost, and in the case of this video, sucks for the vet's final numbers. We have three semi-full shelves here. I mean, it's not a bad haul. Transmission, differential, already gone. They're gone oh. already? I mean, talking about like already picture and oh, put it I away. I thought you sold them. Oh no, that's your job, buddy. You to... <laughs> that's your job. I suppose we'll start over here. One thing that you guys may not have seen. There we go. There we go. Not only did it have the DSX auxiliary fuel pump kit, it has a Kenny Bell booster pump. Of course, we have the methanol system there. We can't ignore the red seats there. I mean, those things not Good money. Not in the best shape but still very nice. We have the rear Bilsteins, which actually survived. We have rear brake calipers, all that very expensive red interior. They look pretty good. They are gonna pull some ridiculous money. I can't wait to see what they're actually going for these days. That's enough talking about it. It is time for Fernando to work his magic on the photos. Tyler over there to start ripping into that Mustang. And then as per usual, I'm gonna take those photos, list everything online and see how we do. Guys, it is about that time. Engine removal on the Mustang. Hopefully it goes much, much better than the C6. I suppose it can't really go any worse, so. One thing I may have simply overlooked, a nice little JLT air oil separator, catch can, whatever you want to call it. One argument that I'm not gonna hear from the Coyote guys is that these motors are not too big for their own good. You have like, what, a half inch of clearance, if that, on the frame rails on these. LS's, plenty of room, no sweat. That whole 4 cam thing, way overrated. What the hell is this? Where did that come from? Frame rail. That was way down there, right? You, yeah. just, you just found that right there? Yep. There we go, pipes, P-Y-P-E-S. Just so you can get a better look out of here, we're gonna go ahead and polish off this shaft real nice. There we go. Look at that carbon fiber, beautiful. I'm amazed every time we get one of these, it's a shame that you can't see them when they're in the car because they definitely look more like a show piece than a go fast piece. Back here on the rear end, there's pretty much nothing that we didn't already know. RTR sway bar, we have some suspension bits down there. The shocks, which are Coney Actives. It does have rear subframe bushings as well. Those are solid. Now we can go over the small stuff. Talk about the extra bits of value in this car all day long. When it comes down to it, even more so than the LS, it all rides on this. When it comes down to it, even more so than the LS, it all rides on the quality of that. We all know the C6 didn't work out. Therefore, we really need this one too. A damn good start. Oh, 
this is going about as well as you could ever want. We only have one more left. As long as this last one doesn't fail us, we're good to go. Shoo. Well, there we are. Can't ask for anything better than that. That is as good as good gets. So now that we have a perfect mint condition drop out here, we're gonna go ahead and slap the blower head unit back on it. It's the perfect scenario for someone who doesn't need a full Mustang supercharger kit, but really wants a Coyote with a 10R80 and a blower head unit on it. She tested good? Maybe. You don't even have to tell me, I already know. Yeah, why is that? It's a Coyote, baby. A Coyote finally beat an LS in something. So this is where we're gonna leave the Mustang for the weekend. Dalton and I are headed to Michigan, North Carolina, Wisconsin, and some other places on the road with eBay Motors. So Tyler and Fernando are gonna finish this guy up on Monday, then by the time I get back, I will have a ton of pictures waiting for me. This looks like a whole different shop now. Long time no see. I don't see any of the parts from the Mustang or the Corvette laying around, so how'd it go? It was a pretty good amount of parts. For Especially both cars? Yeah, for both cars. Okay. It's, that was surprising because I didn't expect that. But. Another question, and this is on a somewhat unrelated note, but I just noticed this. What? Oh, the win? Yeah. So, what, well, what? I, think, I think this is still a secret for you. You already tell the public you're going to put this in a 97? Or Shut up. Sick. Shut up, Fernando. <laughs> I'm just saying. Are you worried to be slow in your 997, trying to have a better performance on your 997? You know, say, oh, look at that car over there. This is what you need. It just Drop like faster. swayed back and forth. <laughs> I guess we better get back on topic and uh, stop ruining my 997 as if I haven't already done that. But yeah. you know. You guys know what time it is now. It's time to list all this stuff. Two cars, though, I don't think it's going to take very long. I'm going to try to knock it out tonight. Then hopefully tomorrow morning we can get in here and do our breakdown. I will admit that I thought that I kind of swindled you into that bet. How'd that work out for and you? And it looks like I'm going to end up shooting myself in the foot. Yeah, I think so. Obviously, the Corvette won. Don't ask me how. Well, actually, I'm going to tell you how because after we listed everything, it became quite clear. Let's go ahead and hop onto the old computer here and I will show you just how we pulled off the upset of this series. Okay, so before we get into the parts, we do have to go into what we paid for the cars. Max bid on this C6 was $7,800. All in with fees, $86.73. You can see this car looked pretty rough when we bought it. We knew what we were getting. The one thing we didn't know, obviously, is that it had an iron block in it. Next up, the Mustang, which kind of looked like a run-of-the-mill Mustang. I still feel like we got a really good deal on this car. There's the blower. Nobody was missing this. Very 100% obvious. Okay, well, I just want to, you know, make sure that I speak my piece here in case I That's have it earlier in the video that I was the one that bought the Corvette. I was on Team Corvette from the get-go. All right, I just want to put it out there, make sure it's public knowledge. I didn't recall that, but hey, thanks for, he you know, did. getting me lunch, idiot. Yeah, he, yeah. he bought the car and then lost lunch for it. <laughs> what what a bad. moron. Bid on the Mustang, 11.8. After fees, we had a total of $12,718. Now take note of where this car came from and also where this one came from because that will come into play a little bit later. First off, the C6, and man, what a C6 it was. Just getting me lunch, making us a ton of money, everything you could ever want out of a part out. Quite literally, something this small is the difference in this competition. The C6 Silver Blade Throttle Body. If you're not familiar, the Gold Blades, Silver Blades, they look the same, other than, well, obviously the color of the blades. The Silver Blades, however, are worth a good bit more money. Gold Blades are $100 throttle body. Since we had a Silver Blade here, 250. A couple of the random aftermarket parts we had here that didn't add up to a whole lot. In fact, if the gauges were actually a little more complete, they'd be worth a little more. But the pair of gauges with the boost sensor, the A pillar we have here as well, the whole kit we had to list for 200 bucks. Now this is significantly cheaper than you could buy this stuff new, but when you have a wiring mess like this, and it's not a really new neat product where we're sure absolutely everything you need is there, we have to sell them pretty cheap. Another one that should have went for more money, the engine harness. This was just damaged everywhere. Modified, damaged, broken connectors. This has it all. 
If we had an undamaged LS2 manual engine harness, you're looking at like $500. Because this one is anything but that, we cut that number in half and went with 250. But now, this is where things get fun and we actually start having some really expensive parts come across the board. We've already talked about the red interior. When I said red interior was expensive, I meant it. Something as simple as this little center console side trim panel, $200. A black one, at most, 40 bucks. We did get lucky with an MGW short shifter here that added on a cool $300. Normally a stock C6 shifter is about $130. Somehow we did luck out with this transparent target top, which we assumed was going to be bad, but as you saw earlier in the video, ended up actually being good. The only flaw to it is some adhesive on it. One other thing we were actually kind of saved by here, the older center console radio bezel setups. It used to be that only the newer carbon ones were worth money, but lately, every time we posted one of these for $300 or so, they get snapped up immediately. I don't know what the usage is on them. I don't know if people are reskinning them or what, but we posted this one for $400, and I have no doubt it's gonna sell quick. Of course, a big one here, the blower kit. And when I say kit, I mean that loosely because it's really an eight rib head unit with bracketry. Brand new, this head unit itself is three grand. This one comes with a lot more. These brackets, the eight rib setup, it's not necessarily cheap, but I listed all this stuff for $2,800. More really big money red parts here. Center console glove box, $450. Probably the most desirable red piece other than the seats are the door panels. These are listed for $700. No doubt that these are going to sell really quick as well. If I had to guess, I'd say this is probably one of the first red pieces that sells from the car. All in all, this added up to a grand total of $24,598. I looked up the total parts amount on this car first, and as soon as I saw that number, I knew we were in for a good race. It, this is the race, right? Yeah, it's a race. Yeah. So next up here, the Mustang, and you're going to see exactly why this car underperformed horribly. First off, the parts we have left from it, $10,603. If you think that's massively, absurdly low, you'd be right, and that's because $16,000 in parts have already sold from it. The engine and the rear diff cradle. After that, this Mustang becomes pretty anemic. Unlike the Corvette, which is a proprietary car, there's no base model. Well, there is, but for our purposes, there's no V6, there's no junk lower end model like there is with the Mustangs. That makes every little part worth more. When you can get this same wiper cow or the same dash panel off every single Mustang that's made and they made hundreds of thousands of them, it simply means they're not that valuable. Some of the parts off this car that I do think will be valuable, however, RTR front and rear sway bars. I listed these at $180 each. I think they'll pull that. They cost a little more than that new and they were overall in great shape. You know we had some goodies in there like the BMR front subframe brace here, $150. A couple other parts that actually did perform well off this car. The electric power steering rack, even though it has a little damage, and the active muffler cuts. Those little valves on there effectively double the price of these mufflers. If we just had the regular quad tip mufflers, I think we sell them for like $230. These ones, $400. The electric steering racks out of the newer Mustangs, always great money, $350. One part that unfortunately the Mustang lacks in are the seats. They're not really worth that much money. Unless you have a really nice option car, different stitching, or of course, Recaro's, they just aren't that valuable for some reason. $700. We have the super expensive digital cluster. $1250 all day. They sell constantly for that. They're a massively popular upgrade for the Mustang crowd. Now this is where it all gets kind of junky. That Mustang was damaged pretty much everywhere. The front ends are a great source of value on those cars, and we pretty much had nothing. A lot of the stuff that you're looking at right now until you get up here and see the head unit is just not that valuable. What looked like a more complete car ended up producing 58 items. That is really, really light. I would not have expected it more so. I would not have expected the Corvette to pull 83 items. So while I think everybody thought this was going to be a runaway for the Mustang, the Mustang underperformed. The Corvette overperformed, and it made it really, really close. So you might be thinking to yourself, Lee, that doesn't look like the shop. You'd be right about that. We're actually in Los Angeles right now. As quick as we got back to the shop from Michigan, we had to leave again, but we're not gonna let that stop us from getting the video out. So without further ado, here are the results. We're gonna go ahead and go with the Mustang first. As you guys already know, purchase price 12718 Car shipping, very, very cheap. 
We got this from Baltimore. We only paid $100. It only had to come 50 miles down the road. No big deal. While this car was super light on volume, there are a couple bigger parts to ship. So we still racked up $12.50. As far as labor goes, this car was cake. $500. It took no time. There were barely any parts to photo, to store, to ship. It's going to be really, really cheap. Now selling fees get a little interesting here. You might be wondering why it's only 1060 when you see that we have $26,603 in total parts. Selling fees are of course, as you would imagine, fees involved with selling the parts on eBay, PayPal, credit card processing fees, any fee involved with selling the part online or locally. The guy who bought that supercharged drivetrain paid via check when he picked it up. It's super rare that it works out this way, but in this case, it saved us selling fees completely on it. Therefore, we just have to allot for the 1060 on the rest of the parts and we're good to go. Dead inventory on this car, we ended up with a flat thousand bucks. Dead inventory is, of course, stuff that sits around forever, stuff that we have to discount heavily to sell or simply never sells. The Mustang is a little heavier than the Vet because stuff just tends to sit a little longer on them. All in all, that left us with a theoretical net margin of $9,875. And now we get to move on to your champion here, the Corvette. We bought it for $86.73, as you know. Car shipping was four times the cost of the Mustang as we had to bring it across the country from Dallas. Now, even though on this car we don't have a full engine in the ship, which brings the shipping cost down significantly, there are a few other larger things. Transmission, differential seats. There's quite a few things on this that will add up. So we went a little heavier than the Mustang at $1,500. And while in the grand scheme of things, this car was still really easy to take apart, we did have to add an extra 250 for the engine teardown. Being that at the time of filming, we've sold nothing, we had to do selling fees as a full 10%, 2460. And the last expense on this Corvette dead inventory, 750. We're really lucky with Corvette stuff. It's in super high demand. And on this one, we didn't get a lot of junk. One thing we have to thank for that is the red interior. If some of that interior was black, I might include it in dead inventory because we have so much of it. But the red stuff sells immediately for a lot of money every single time. And if you were following along with your calculator out, you know that gives the Corvette the win by $190. I thought this was going to be a blowout in the Mustang's favor. Honestly, everybody at the shop, as soon as we saw those cars, we thought the Mustang was going to be the car. I even thought that. I was just kind of going with the Corvette because I'm a Corvette guy. Fortunately, GM loyalty paid off. I think the only thing to do now is put another Corvette up against something else, which I am open for suggestions for. So put it down in the comments. As always, I hope you guys really enjoyed this. Next salvage story is not a head-to-head, -head, but it's a really, really good one. And it also happens to be one of my personal favorite cars. So we will see you back very shortly with that. He's going to cut it. Don't worry about it. That's what editing's for, baby. <laughs> Turns out the YouTube safety brigade. Yeah. Ooh, first try. Got it. A drain. At least they thought about that. Whoop. Oops. This from, this from yeah. Fernando just yeah. f***ing stuff up. See? What are you talking Basically, about? I didn't even see this car before. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, I'm stealing that for the juke. What would you call... <laughs> we, we can't go five minutes into a video without him bringing up a juke. It just no, can't happen. I'm actually, I, and I really came into this video with like no f***ing plan. I, as soon as I saw him pull around, he's probably like, these assholes are out here filming a video and I had to load up every box myself. Oh, Mustang! Woo! Stop it. You're talking about buying a Corvette literally today. Yeah. No, she's not good, Eric. <laughs> off.